Hello, one and all, and welcome to Bellamy Draws. I am Bellamy, and today I will be drawing my nightmares. Yes, you've heard me correctly. One thing about me is that as far back as I can remember, I've always had nightmares. While some are one-offs, others return on a yearly basis. And I've always been in the mindset that if I have to see it, so do you. Sharing is caring, after all. And what better time to start sharing some scares than a few days before Halloween. So let's begin. One night when I opened my eyes, I realized I was no longer in my room. I didn't notice at first because before my eyes were wide and my mind conscious, I didn't feel a thing. However, now that I was more aware of the world, I felt it all. I felt the stiff wooden planks cutting against my skin. I felt my heat trap beneath the edgy wool blanket. I felt the cold grip of a midnight in winter reach across my face and wrap me in its icy embrace. Though all of these things I was feeling were unusual, it was the last thing that bothered me the most. It was summer. June. The hottest on record. So why was it cold now, I wondered. Even though my body was no longer numb, I couldn't move. Not really. With my head, I could rock my body back and forth against the creaky floorboards, but that was the best result I could hope to produce. Then I stopped, dead in my movements from what I saw. A swift shadow swept across the ceiling and my eyes fixated on a specific point. My body tensed, as if it weren't already tense enough. Then I saw it. A black silhouette, small, about the size of a six-year-old, perched on the ceiling. Horns layered across its head and a long, narrow tail slithered across the surface. Against the moonlight that entered the room, I could also see two eyes. They were blacker than night, but as reflective as an oil spill, and a toothy smile that extended from ear to ear. The little light that entered the room showed me its body was hairless and simian-like. What the hell was that, I thought, but dared not to speak. In its hand, sharp fingers more bone than flesh were shuffling something into its mouth. It chittered and chewed, smacking its lips as it ate. The sound was quiet, but the room was more so, till I realized. I was even less alone than I had been a moment ago. Across the room, snoring broke the silence. I didn't want to look down, but I had no choice in the matter. My head slumped to its side and I saw another boy barely younger than I. He was fast asleep on his cot. Despite the cold, he wore no blanket. Despite the creature, he lost no sleep. That's what I thought at first. And from the doorway, a louder, more reckless squeak arose from the hinges. The boy woke up in no time and was well aware of the creature I saw and its two nearly identical companions. The boy tried to his feet, pressing back against the wall and using the balls of his heels to stand, but he didn't make it to a vertical base before one of the three creatures leapt onto him. He pushed back against the creature, but it was grabbing his wrist with its bony fingers, wrapping them around until I heard a pop and a muffled scream. Though the young man was twice the size of the creature, he didn't have half its strength. The struggle lasted less than a minute before the creature unhinged its jaw and let out a violent scream, but one that made no noise. It wasn't a scream that was heard, but rather one that was felt. The kind that shook the entire floor and made the windows rattle. The boy no longer moved, not as he had. His face fell to its side, his mind still aware, but his body laid motionless. All except for his eyes, that though they were becoming milky, they became fixated on me. The second pair joined his. I panicked. My body still wouldn't move. I rocked back and forth and tried to wiggle my fingers and toes. The floorboard screeched below me until all eight eyes fell upon me. I kept moving until the momentum was mine and I could stand to my feet. My legs were stilts beneath me and swayed too far in each direction, but I bolted for the door. I made it only three quarters of the way there until I felt it. 
A sharp pain carving a scar down my back. The floor shook again and the windows rattled. I felt slowly as if I would never hit the floor no matter how large it was growing. In that time, the very paint from the walls began to peel, and by the time I hit the floor, the walls were barren. I didn't feel it, the fall. I didn't feel anything anymore, but I was turned onto my back with my head pointed towards the ceiling. Two creatures waded across that gray sky while the other descended upon me. My chest tightened, as if it wanted to collapse under the creature's weight. I opened my mouth as wide as I could, but it wasn't far enough. My lips were barely more than purse, but I dug deep and I yelled, hoping somebody, anybody in the house would hear, but nobody did, not even me. My mouth was dry beyond reason, but that wasn't why I made no sound. I let out another scream, but it was just as silent. It ripped along my throat until it was raw and a metallic taste entered my mouth. My lungs hurt and I coughed, but that too made no sound. The other two creatures left the ceiling and lurked above my arms. With their bony fingers that felt more cold than sharp, they toyed with my face. I fought to breathe, but I was closer to hyperventilating. Their fingers like scissors snipped and I couldn't tell what they were cutting until I looked into one of their eyes. It was like a black pond and just as reflective. I saw myself, I thought, but it wasn't right. My face was putty in their hands, the extra bits chopped off and fed into their mouths. What remained was melted and twisted, as they molded my face into their own image, and this went on for what felt like days. For nearly a week, I felt their cold, slimy fingers trimming away at my face, and then my body until I woke up, back in my bed, in my room. Their hands were no longer on me, but their grip was just as strong. I spoke. Just a simple phrase. Hello? And I knew I could speak again. I moved towards the bathroom, but I was wary as I did. I peeked out the door and the hallway was empty. In the bathroom, I kept my eyes closed at first. I was worried about what I might see. Eventually, I opened my eyes, and in the mirror, my face was fine, almost normal. Drenched in sweat, but something was off. I couldn't place it until a nervous smile broke across my face. Narrow, yet wide. Teeth sharp beyond all need, and eyes no longer brown, but black, without the slightest tint of white beneath them. I nearly collapsed to the bathroom floor, but I was caught by the wall. I rubbed my eyes and looked again. This time I was okay. No impossibly big smile, no black eyes, no pointy ears or sharp claws. I was left only with a feeling that would stay with me for a few hours into the waking day. It was the feeling that this won't be the last time that I wake up in that room. And that was the end of my nightmare. I hope you enjoyed my misery. If you want to enjoy more of my misery, like and subscribe for more content. I am Bellamy, wishing you a fantastic day.